Hey everybody, it's Megan coming at you live in book launch like a boss. And this is the Q&A session for how to write a book description that sells. If you miss the video for some reason, you can catch it. There will be a recording. You can um, find it um, in this group. You can find it in All Writers Welcome, the Facebook group, or in the, on the All Writers Welcome Facebook page. Um, if you haven't been over there yet, uh, we'd love it if you went over and gave us a thumbs up. We appreciate it so much. Awesome. Great to see you smiling faces. Hello, Miss Laurie. Hello, Miss Trish. Hello, Miss Ella. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is go through questions that people have asked already um, about the book description topic. And I also want to invite anybody who's watching this now to put questions into the comments. And this time I will take, I will look at the questions that are coming in live. Hey, Carrie, um, and respond to them. So don't be shy, add your questions and, um, let's get you set up with your book description so that it sells your book. Okie doke. Oh, I apologize. This first person, I did not, uh, capture your name and it is such a good question. So the first question is, what's a good length we should shoot for in the description? Are there keywords or phrases to include? Do phrases get overused quickly? Um, like 99% of the descriptions I see lately say one of the characters has a dark secret. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of good questions in this one question. Um, length is going to be variable. It will depend on your genre. So like for high fantasy, where there's a lot going on, definitely it's going to be a longer description. Might be, you know, around 250, almost 300 words. Um, some book descriptions can be as short as like 75 or 100 words. Um, that is not as important as just making sure you follow the whole formula. We talked about the hook and then the world conflict stakes and then the cliffhanger. So as long as you have those elements, the length is variable. Um, and like all of the, all, like all of the tips related to book description, really what you want to do is match your genre. So you want to look at other books in your genre and see what kind of length they're using. But that will definitely be variable. Keywords and phrases. Yes. <laughs> this will, again, depend on your genre. And this is something that we want to look at in the um, book launch Like a Boss boot camp. Um, you know, we're going to be walking you through what will those be for your genre. The, the idea of phrases getting overused is a tricky one. Because, of course, since this is a commercial when you, when readers see what they expect, it makes them pay attention. So it's kind of like watching a trend, you know, um, when a trend is popular and everybody does it, then, you know, that's what readers expect. And so we all want to do it. And then as it starts to get overused, you know, so a great example is remember the, um, those memes that used to go around and it was, you know, like I'm a writer and it's like what my friends think I do, what my mom thinks I do, what my, you know, what my cat thinks I do, what I really do. Right. And those were so big for a while and everybody was using them. And so everybody was using them. And so they were getting circulated and then it got to this like magical tipping point. And then it was, Oh, that's passe. Right. So it's just about watching the trends, you know, like having a dark secret is definitely very attention grabbing. It works for a lot of genres. So it's, um, it's not bad to use things that are used a lot because that's, it, it signals readers like this is the type of book you're looking for. It's just a matter of watching the trend and noticing when it starts to be on the way out and then switching to the next thing. And of course you do that by reading book descriptions. So, and it's something that we can help you with as well. Ella is a, is a fantastic trend spotter <laughs> among books. All right. So great question. Um, Queen Bee Aurora asked, I want to ask what um, goes into a book description and what stays out. What are the catchy words to use in describing my book? Excuse me. So catchy words, again, that's something that depends on your genre. And we want to look into it with you and give you some hands-on help. Um, the, what goes into it is that formula, the hook, the world, character and conflict at stakes, and then the cliffhanger. Victoria says, um, how can I be succinct and impactful? Ooh, by writing many, many drafts, Victoria. <laughs> um, it's, it's funny because a lot of people think the shorter something is to write, the easier it is to write. In my experience, um, <laughs> after 11 years coaching writers, um, it is actually much harder to write something short because every word counts more. 
right? It's like having a teeny tiny suitcase to go on a trip. It's like, that doesn't take shorter to pack. That takes much longer to pack because you think about everything that goes in. You're like, ooh, can I really wear this sweater more than one time? Is that a good item? So um, it just takes a lot of editing. You're going to follow the formula and then you're going to write a version and then you're going to cut it and write a version and cut it and write a version and cut it. And that's exactly what we help you do in the boot camp is really refine it. Um, Linda Cox asked, what's the secret formula to boiling a 75,000 word manuscript down to 250 words? Linda, the secret formula is not to summarize your story. It's to summarize the flavor. And that's where that formula comes in. And I'll repeat it. I'll just keep saying the formula, you guys. <laughs> it's the hook. And then it's the um, meat in the middle with your world, the character and conflict, the stakes. And then it ends with the cliffhanger. And that's what signals people ooh, that's the book for me. There's no way you're going to get all of your comp complex plot and characters into your description. The more you try, the more it opens a can of worms. And you're like, oh, but if I talk about that character, then I have to give the backstory, which means I, then I have to go here. And before you know it, you're just writing the whole book. So the way to boil your, your um, several hundred, uh, you know, tens of thousands of word manuscript down into just a few hundred words is to summarize the flavor and the feel, not the plot. Um, all right. Uh, uh, Beth asked, or Beth said, making the description exciting without giving too much away is a challenge. I always feel like my descriptions are dull. Ooh. So Beth, this might be where, um, if you're not already adding in a hook and a cliffhanger, that would be something that would really help. And this would also be a place where looking at the language um, and seeing whether you're setting up danger, excitement, um, the novelty, the familiar, something like that could really go a long way to, to helping you. I feel you on that, right? You want it to be exciting, but you don't want to give away the cool, um, whether they're plot twists or the things unique to your story. Um, but you can do that by, um, you, you really making sure you follow the formula so that you're using, um, uh, What's the way I want to say this? You're using elements that are guaranteed to get readers' attention because a hook is, you know, that's the whole point of it. And the cliffhanger, that's the whole point of it. Um, ooh, Christina says, I'm working on a press release. Any advice? Definitely you want a book description that works like a commercial. And you might want the shortened version. So, Christina, what I would recommend is use this formula that I've been saying ad nauseum. <laughs> the, the hook, the world, the character and conflict the stakes and the cliffhanger, those five components, write out, you know, get a, get a draft and then shorten it, shorten it, shorten it until you've got, you know, maybe just three or four sentences, maybe even fewer than that, you know, maybe just two sentences that get the most compelling points. Um, and when you shrink it down, if you go just like your hook and your cliffhanger, that can be a really exciting um, for your that can be a really exciting blurb for your press release. But especially for a press release, this is about getting people's attention in a short amount of time. But it depends on where it's for. You know, if you're working with um, a PR firm, um, ask them, you know, what length do they want? A ask them directly, what kind of length do they want? And then you'll see how much you can get in. Tiffany says, what are the biggest differences between a description of your book for a query and a blurb? Ooh, great question. If you are querying an agent or a publisher, Tiffany, you definitely want to stick to their guidelines. Pardon me. And that just involves getting online and doing research about what that agent wants. Um, you'll also find online a lot of great guides to just general query, you know, what should a query letter look like? And this is a place where you do want to provide a synopsis of your book. The book description formula I've been going over is for selling your book. That's for places where your book is on sale on Amazon or on Goodreads. It is not for um, agents and publishers. So that's where you do want a synopsis and they will give you generally the length but I think the best way to see how to do it is to read examples. If you get online and you do a search for how to write a good query letter for an, to an agent and just check out some of the examples, but make sure you follow the guidelines for the place you're submitting to. Great distinction. Um, and then the, the blurb is what we've been talking about. Shannon says, what should we avoid when writing the book description? What is cliche? How do you know which part to add and what can be left out? Do you add anything about the subplots or focus solely on the main plot? Um, so I'm going to start at the end of your question, Shannon. Um, adding anything about the subplots or focusing solely on the main plot, 
you're going to eat, I mean, the main plot is not even going to get its full, um, uh, 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 word. <laughs> Guys, I used all my words <laughs> in the training. Um, it's not even going to get the full treatment. So the, um, the key is, again, giving the flavor. So Shannon, don't worry about your subplots. Your whole plot's not even going to make it in there. This is really about helping people see, yes, that's the kind of, that's the kind of book. Nobody ever, you know, Ella says this all the time about book covers and I, it's great for your book description too. Nobody ever reads the book and then goes back to the book cover and is like, wait a minute, it, that the castle was white, but this castle is black. And nobody ever goes back to the description and goes, it didn't mention the part about, right? It's only a marketing tool. <laughs> it's just there to get you, um, to give you the flavor. So you go, that's the book for me. Um, so Shannon, don't worry about your subplots at all. Um, then as far as cliche, you know, this is kind of a, a question similar to the one earlier about everybody's using somebody has a dark secret, you know, trends are there because they work. When you see everybody is doing something, it's because it works. And so it's really a matter of watching the trends and getting that, that secret help from Ella because she's super on what are the trends and what's working right now and what's in your genre. Um, but don't worry about cliches. Cliches are there because they have truth to them. You know, they're, they're the things that work. They're the things that make sense to a lot of people. So do not shy away from something just because other people are doing it. The, the only way to sh reason to shy away would be if it is kind of past its prime, right? If you're using something that used to be really big and now people have moved on for it. So it's about watching the trend, but don't worry about cliches. We use them because they make sense. Everybody can relate to them. And as far as what you should avoid when writing a book description, I would say avoid trying to explain to us the how and the why things happen. That's a trap you get into where, again, you, you end up opening this can of worms where you go, but in order to understand that character, they have to know this. Um, I gave this example in the live training. I read the, the book description of the Hunger Games. And in that description, it said, when Katniss is forced to fight, something blah, blah, blah. And if you've read the book, you know she was not forced to fight. Her sister was called and she volunteered. But the time and real estate in the book description it would have taken to say that would have totally killed the momentum. So the things to leave out are the small explanations that um, would slow down the book description and take away the momentum of it. All right. Um, Scarlett asks, or Scarlett says, the, uh, the challenge is the whole thing of writing a blurb terrifies me. I find it hysterical that writers have such a hard time writing them. Yeah, isn't that so funny? It's like you just wrote this 75,000 word book and now it's this little itty bitty description. But remember, the shorter the writing is, the harder it is. And that's because you are only putting in certain key things. You have to be very selective. Um, Scarlett, I hope you're less terrified now after hearing the formula. And remember, the more you read book descriptions of other people's books in your genre, the more it's just going to start like sinking in and you'll go, oh, okay, that's what it's about. It's a commercial. So um, Scarlett, here's a, mind here's a mindset shift that might be cool for you to do. I'm going to channel Ella for a minute, get the mindset, get my mindset coaching hat on. Stop trying to write a description of your book and instead write why somebody would love to read your book. Um, so instead of going, oh, what is my book about? Think, why would somebody want to read my book? Oh, my book has a kick-ass teen female protagonist who has to stand up for um, uh, the weaker people around her and like, you know, say, say shove it to the man. <laughs> that's you know, like, that's why people would want to read my book. Ooh, okay. So start thinking about why people would love it, not what it's about. Um, Anne asks, what are the danger zones to stay away from so people don't turn away from reading the description? Ooh. Um, okay. So let me go back to talking a little bit about cliches. The danger with um, okay. overusing um, is that if readers think you are trying to get their attention by simply using a lot of the phrases that are used to get people's attention, they can kind of tune out. So things to avoid would be piling in cliche terms. You know, you don't want to have um, just a whole stack of 
the uh, like recycled questions that you see everywhere. You know, you want to narrow it down. You want to have just the one main question or the one key phrase um, that will get people excited. But what can turn readers off is if you have a whole stack of them. And so it looks like um, there isn't anything unique about the book. It's just, um, uh, uh, it's only commercial speak. It's only um, one rhetorical question after another with nothing about the world and nothing about the characters. But if you follow the formula, you're not going to run into that problem because you're going to have the, um, uh, you're, you're going to know what each sentence is for. You're going to know what each part is for. So you'll have um, that maybe one, you know, cliffhanger cliche at the end, but up until that point, it'll be drawing readers into the world. So following the formula, I would say, Anne, is the way, the way to stay out of the danger zone. <laughs> I love the way you phrase that. Um, okay, Lila asks, how can you tell whether it's the book description or a lack of traffic that's adversely affecting sales? Ooh, that's a good question. And this goes beyond my um, scope to know how many people are actually coming to your page. Um, so that would be about being able to find, you know, your, your stats. And that would be a conversation you'd have with Amazon with KDP. But what I would recommend Lila is share your book description in other places, you know, share it with your newsletter list, share it on social media and start to look at engagement that way so that you can, um, separate the two, right? Share your description in places beyond Amazon or beyond wherever your uh, selling platform is so that you can see how people react to it. So give, give that a try, share it on your social media, share it in your newsletter. Um, uh, Leah says, I thought I knew how to write a book description, but now realize I have a lot to learn. Well, Leah, I hope it feels um, approachable now with this, this formula and it's something you get better at with practice. Just keep practicing it. And by the time you're on your 17th book, you'll be like, just, you know, you'll do them in your sleep. You go, why did I ever think this was hard? But you know, any, anything you're doing for the first time or that you're slightly new at is going to be hard. You're going to get better. <laughs> All right. Deb says, so many blurbs seem to end with a question. Is that kind of a norm or is it something to be avoided? It's a great way to set up a cliffhanger. That was one of the, um, example types of cliffhangers I gave you guys in the training. Um, you know, will she do this or will this happen instead? You know, um, but whether you literally use a question or not, and absolutely you can use a question, remember that you want to plant a question in your readers' minds. So using an actual question is a great way to plant a question, but you don't have to. It's about just making the reader want to know what's going to happen next. And again, in the um, boot camp, we're going to go through actual just writing frames, paint by numbers, where you can go, okay, I'm going to try this sentence structure, I'm going to try this sentence structure, and find one that um, feels comfortable. All right. Um, if Kakai says my main issue is keeping it snappy and to the point, my synopsis was four pages and my description was one page. It needs to be simple. And that's my biggest struggle. Okay. So if Kakai, I want to know if you're on the, <laughs> the, the Q and a live right now, does this formula, um, feel like something you could use to be shorter? Um, this formula is something that you could do in one paragraph. You know, you could have each of these, uh, components could be one sentence, a one sentence hook, a one sentence world, a one sentence character in conflict, a one sentence stakes, and a one sentence cliffhanger. And you're looking at just five sentences, you know, a single paragraph, or you could um, make the, the middle a little bit longer. So if Kakai, I hope if you're, if you're watching this, can you let us know? Um, does that make it feel doable to go shorter? Um, because a four page synopsis is very, very long. And especially if that's for a publisher, if that's for an agent, I bet it's longer than they're interested in, in reading. Um, and a long, a whole page of a description as well. It's definitely, um, too, it's probably means that it, it's probably indicates that you're focused too much on your story, trying to give us the plot, um, instead of just giving us the flavor. So this formula is perfect for you. Um, all right. Uh, Carrie says, I'm so confused right now between book descriptions and blurbs. Both, both are needed and both of mine suck on my current story. Oh no, Carrie, at this point, I don't know if I'm coming or going. Oh, I feel you. Right. So here's, here's my feeling about it. I mean, I talked about three different kinds of writing. I talked about, you know, your book description that, um, goes on your sales pages, wherever your book is for sale. 
Um, that's your, your book description and that's the longer form. And then I talked about shortening it to be the blurb to go on your book. But, you know, description and blurb, I think you can use them interchangeably. Um, but what I highly recommend is having a couple of different versions. And I recommend starting with three, but you can you can have one for every occasion. Once you have that initial description that follows that five-step formula, you can start paring down because you can take just the hook and just the cliffhanger, boom, and put them together and you have something really short. Again, that's great for social media. It's great for your newsletter. Um, you can just take the um, the cliffhanger. Um, one of the writers in the All Writers Welcome Academy, April, has this really awesome, uh, like, cliffhanger at the end of her longer description and it's a question and it's would you die to live again and that is that's become like part of her branding so just on her website she's able to use what is just the cliffhanger from her description so it's recognizable when people read the longer description they get like that question in context and they see you know what's leading up to that question but then she's able to just use it all over for branding and it's this intriguing question you're like ooh, i get you know and you start to get the flavor of the book so carrie once you get that longer description you can then just like cut and paste and use extract different parts from it you know take out the middle and use just the top and the bottom shorten the middle you can do all kinds of cool modular stuff so that you have something that's perfect for every different spot and then it's just playing with it and seeing what length feels um like most useful for different settings and being open to experiment being open to just Try different things in different places. Look at what other authors are doing and um, see see what works. So once you have that main one, it's a lot easier to play with it and get it in shorter versions. And yeah, so a difference between a, a blurb and a description, you can use the words interchangeably, but it is good to have the longer form and the, the shorter form. Okay. So we asked you all, like, what were your biggest challenges around book descriptions? And here are some of the things people said. Um, Jacques said, it needs impact and it's falling flat, even though the book is pretty good. Oh, man, um, that's a bummer, Jacques. But try um, focusing on the hook and on the cliffhanger and see if that helps to bump things up. And it also may mean you need stronger verb choices in your description or you need a clearer um, depiction of the world when you get to that part of the formula. Um, Anne says a big challenge is finding the right words to evoke people's response so they want to read her novel. Yeah, that's really, really the tricky thing. And what is so helpful is reading other people's book descriptions and asking what about this grabs me. You know, in the live training, one of the take action steps I said is go read a book description of a book in, in your genre and see what grabs you. What about it, you know, especially in the first sentence or two where the hook should be, what grabs you and makes you want to keep reading? And, you know, notice what um, other people are doing and uh, use, use, those, <laughs> use those things that work. All right. Um, Deb says the challenge is condensing a more than 500 page book into 200 words or less. I hear you. <laughs> and that's when you want to focus on the flavor, not the plot. So, um, that's, that's the magic right there. It's a commercial. It's not, it's not a description. Stop thinking about answering the question. What is my book about? And start thinking about answering the question. Why is my book awesome? Okay. Um, ooh, Monette's challenge is sometimes, she says, sometimes when I try to write it, I realize I have to rewrite the book. Now that I think is a good problem to have because what you're discovering is that when you go to write it in the short form and go like, you know, what, what problem is my character facing? And then what's the big, like, cliffhanger question that there might not be a good flow there. There might be something that's missing. And if you guys notice in the book launch, like a boss um, boot camp, and I described it in the training, there are two modules in there that are about doing some rewrites and doing some tweaks. We do a first chapter like a boss where we go through your first chapter and make sure it is on point and it is grabbing people. And we also do a character arc and climax module where we make sure that the, um, problem your character is facing throughout the book is escalating so that by the time it gets to the climax, readers are like, oh my gosh, I really am dying to know, is this character going to face the problem, you know, solve the, solve the issue, whatever it is. 
and you're um uh, uh, uh Sorry, I lost my train of thought. You're seeing that when you're writing your book description. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're having a hard time finding the drama and finding the urgency in your book description, it may actually mean that you need to do some rewrites. And that, So that's why we have those modules in there. We don't want you to have to rewrite the whole book. We want you to pick those key moments and say, okay, how can I tweak that um, and just make it uh, really clearly like this fantastic arc that will excite people. Okie dokie. Um, Shauna says, of all the events in the book, how do you decide what to highlight in the description? Ooh, great question. Um, the key events are the ones that are going to relate to the conflict. So that would be, you know, what starts the conflict, right? But when she realizes that she's really a lizard, you know, it's like, what gets everything going? Um, and then that, that cliffhanger moment, um, and a great strategy for the cliffhanger is the things compounding, right? But then when she's on the trip to Europe and she has to do the business meeting, but she's a giant iguana, you know, what will happen next? So the things that you want to share with readers are the, the things that give us the, oh, husband on camera. <laughs> Sorry. Husband sighting. Um, the things that give your readers the flavor and draw them in and make them go, okay, that's the world for me. Um, and then also bring them to that like urgency, that cliffhanger moment. So that's a kind of a, a, a difficult answer, Shana, I know, because it's like, well, what are the things in my book? But, you know, consider your genre, right? So like if this is for um, romance, you know, what is that moment where it's like the romance is tested or, you know, the will they get together or not kind of thing? Those would be the elements you'd want to look for. Tiffany says, um, what's the difference between a book blurb and a description of your book for a query letter? Tiffany, definitely um, make sure you look up what the agent or publisher wants specifically. They'll probably have a length in mind. And a query letter is going to have more of a synopsis of the plot. Your book description for people to buy is a commercial. So it's flashy, it's shorter, it's, you know, it doesn't even have to give us a plot description, really. It just has to get us to see the flavor. But a publisher or an agent does want to know the description, and um, it will be a more um, toned down. You know, it won't be a flashy commercial. It'll be more toned down. But definitely look up, um, uh, get online, you know, just do a search for the agency you're submitting to or the publisher you're submitting to or even something like how to write a great query letter. Um, I know good examples, and that's the, the best way to go about it. Um, Shauna says, when you say keywords, are you talking about what you would find on KD Spy? Oh, no, thank you. I'm so glad you asked this. Um, something that's searchable in the Amazon search engine or something else. Ooh, Shauna, you, uh, uh, saved me on this. Thank you. I, guys, I use keywords in like a layman's way. I just meant, I didn't mean your KD Spy words. I didn't mean the keywords you're putting your book under for people to search. I just meant specific words. I should say catchy words. <laughs> that would be better than keywords, right? When we're reading along, there are certain words that catch our attention and kind of signal genre or signal certain situations. So somebody asked the question about, you know, like a dark secret. That's going to catch readers who like that element in the story, a dark secret. So yes, great question. No, I did not mean your Katie spy words. I didn't mean the words people are searching you by. I mean your catchy words, the words that give flavor. And those ones will differ by genre. They will go with your writing style. Um, and reading book descriptions in your genre is a great way to start hunting down, you know, what are the trends? What are, what are people using? And then um, decide how much you want to use those, you know, how do you want to be um, totally in the trend or do you want to be like, use one of those words once and then, you know, get, get a little bit, um, uh, get, go more unique, more unique, <laughs> get differentiate your book somehow. So once you know what those trend words are, you can decide to, to use them or not. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, Lilith says, how do you know when your description is done? No more tweaking. Oh boy, that's a terrible question for me because I am a constant tweaker. Oh, I no, that sounds terrible. I am, <laughs> I'm always tweaking my writing. <laughs> the peanut gallery is laughing. Um, I am always tweaking my writing. But test it out. Share your description with people. You know, get your um, put it put a version in your newsletter, 
um, put it, you know, share it as a Facebook post and see what kind of reactions you get from people and get feedback on it. If you have a writing critique group, share it with them. This is something we're going to be doing in the book launch like a boss bootcamp is giving you personalized feedback and walking through what effect um, the whole thing is having. Um, you're going to look at the length you're going to um, use the checklist and make sure that you've got all the component parts you need. And also, do you have those catchy words? Do you have those trend words? Um, and what's what's the flow and what's the momentum like? So it's a hard thing to um, it, it's a hard thing to know about your own description, I would say. But sharing it with other people is going to let you know how effective it is. And also, <laughs> getting getting my feedback if you join us in the boot camp. All right. Um, Carrie says, for a lot of erotic shorts, there isn't much, if any, cliffhanger needed for stories. So it's hard to go from there to a full-on novel form. Oh, yeah. So Carrie, it sounds like you're talking about changing, um, like when you ch write in different genres, um, practicing writing book descriptions that fit those different genres. Absolutely. You're going to have to change the style a little bit. And again, I sound like such a broken record, but read book descriptions from that genre. So Carrie, like for your bear shifter novels, you know, they'll be different for your erotica um, descriptions. Absolutely. Go look at descriptions for bear shifter novels. Go check out the kinds of um, uh, sentence uh, cliffhangers and um, enders that people are using and um, see if there's something that appeals to you. That's the first thing. Go shopping around. What are other people doing? What do I like? What do I not like? What would I want to do different? And then use the formula. And um, uh, if you go back to that live training, you know, I gave a lot of different possible cliffhangers. There's the, you know, destiny is moving this way. There's the problems are compounding. There's the, you know, an introduction of something new. There are um, all these different ways to approach that cliffhanger. So it's something that, yeah, you'll have to practice. It's it's a newer skill because it's a different type of description. So practice will definitely help. Okay, I'm scrolling to see if there are more questions. Is there a way to search on Amazon to avoid certain things like paranormal romance, ghost, historical, minus erotica? Um, Lori, help me with your question a little bit more. I'm not sure. Um, why you want to avoid those things. Can you clarify a little bit? Um, yes, Shauna, my husband finds me very amusing. <laughs> He's laughing at me, at me. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm seeing, are there more questions? So Lori, if you can help me understand that question better so I can answer, that would be fantastic. Um, ooh, Shauna has a great suggestion. We could have beta readers write the description by asking them to describe the main events of the story. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. And then you just want to tr uh, translate those main events into the, the flavor. But it's great to ask people if you have beta readers, if you have a critique group um, who's looking at your book, what is standing out to them most? What are they really excited about in your book? Because then you would get to include what are some of the um, unique and really compelling elements of your book as well. Um, all right. So I am scrolling. I'm not seeing more questions. Um, mm. Carrie saying I can break it down to as little as 25 words that are super boring. Ooh. Um, if you're finding the language is boring, Carrie, uh, that would be a time to, you know, look at the, look at some cliches, look at some trends. That would be a time where you go, okay, what are other people doing to punch up the language a little bit? And what could, <laughs> would that work for me? <laughs> um, how could I use this for myself? Um, oh, okay. Lori, you're, you're, so when you're searching for, um, books in your genre, you're only finding ones that aren't strictly your genre. Ooh, that sounds like an Ella question. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lori, since you're in the Academy, that's something we could actually help you with um, in a more in-depth way. But it sounds like what you're saying is that you want to be reading book descriptions of books in your genre and that when you do a search, you're finding books that are kind of half in your genre, but mostly not. Um, that sounds like something we could absolutely help you with in the Already's Welcome Academy because you would want to do that not just for book descriptions, but also, you know, when it comes to choosing your keywords and your categories and all that more technical stuff. So. Let's help you out. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get that answered for you. All right. And Ella's saying, yep. Okay, you all. Um, 
Oh, Shauna had a suggestion to look under contemporary romance or young adult romance. See, I love how you all help one another. All the great suggestions we have got. I am not seeing any more questions. Um, but of course, if you have some more, you are welcome to add them to this comment stream. And I will definitely get back to you. Um, and we can keep the conversation going. Thank you so much for joining me for this live Q&A about how to write a book description that sells your book. Um, I really enjoyed hearing all of your questions. There were such great thoughts about book descriptions and bottom line is it's a commercial. It's giving people the flavor, not the full um, plot. And if you just follow that formula, um, it's a great starting place. And one last time, the formula is a hook, then draw us into the world, tell us the character in conflict, give us the stakes and end with a cliffhanger. And that's a great place to start. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. Happy writing. Bye.